Well, we've got the dirty B word, of course, Brexit. Uh, that is something that we've been heavily involved with uh, for the past uh, couple of years, uh, going on going on three years uh, now, um, since the referendum in 2016. So ever since then, and this gives you an inkling of how forward-thinking the police service is, we started planning and assessing what the risks were for policing uh, way back then. Um, cyber security, cyber uh, is an emerging uh, threat that we need to uh, address, and we are addressing, uh, by training officers, by obtaining equipment, by engaging with partners locally and abroad, in order to ensure that um, we are as best prepared as possible. And, and an awful lot of that, of course, is to do with awareness and raising awareness. Um, and, and the other one, of course, the other major one, uh, and of course, these are, these are uh, in addition to, to the normal crime, if you can call it such. Uh, the other one, of course, is, is national security uh, and counterterrorism, uh, which continues and unfortunately will continue uh, for the foreseeable future. And it, it, it's one of those things that, that we need to manage. And, and it's pretty much a balancing act in terms of uh, resourcing and, uh, and focus and, and prioritization and, and everything else. You've mentioned national security, for example. Obviously, one of the things the RGP needs to do is liaise with other law enforcement agencies on a regular basis. So how is this going to be affected by Brexit, do you think? I mean, th this has been a consultation process that uh, government has been working on for years now. Um, and so an, an awful lot of the legal instruments that we need to, to continue functioning have already been e either been resolved or will be resolved in good time uh, in terms of prioritization. Uh, in terms of how we engage with, with partners, in particular our, our Spanish colleagues, um, you know, cops are cops are cops. And irrespective, you know, in, in, even in the darkest days of Margario and, and, and all the rest of them uh, who uh, imposed these restrictions, police officers will always talk to police officers simply because we have a common enemy. And the common enemy is the criminal. Um, and sometimes with greater impetus than others, but we have always spoken. And domestically, in terms of resourcing, how would you like to see the RGP manned, equipped and deployed? Okay, um, you know, that, that, that is a, a large body of work. Um, you know, we have a commitment from, from government that there will be increased resources, which is incredibly welcome, uh, because the demand that is expected of the 21st century is far greater than uh, what it was not so many years ago um, and, and this is work that is that is going forwards the way that that will be worked once we get those resources is that it, it will be done on work that has already been been and has been and will continue to be conducted which is in terms of um, assessing where our priorities lie, where the risk areas are. Uh, you know, there is a force, uh, an RGP force risk matrix uh, or register, uh, which details specifically where our risks are so that we can anticipate what's going to happen, so that we can flexibly resource uh, our needs and, and our demands. And, that, and that's the way that, that it will happen.